I scoured the internet, the internet and, and found, found what, what you had to say. say. And now. And now. <laughs> <laughs> I shall expose you. Hello, beautiful people. I'm the Lunch Master. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Subscribe. This is everything you had to say about Pam Beasley Halpert from The Office. I like her as a shy, quiet, cute Pam rather than the overconfident Pam in my opinion. My favourite Pam is the firewalking Pam and her monologue. Although when a parent's breakup is lovely too, wouldn't it be great that everyone was guaranteed to have a Pam and Jim love once in their lives? Pam isn't super witty or extraordinary. Not particularly original, but she's a sweetheart with a dorky sense of humor. That's just so endearing. Kind and humble, solid kind of person. I love Pam. Pam made best friends with two of most difficult people in the office. What a sweetheart. She has one of the cutest smiles in the world. Pam's my favorite character mainly because she has such a great character development than anyone in the show in my opinion. I remember Michael saying in the Women's Appreciation episode that he wished for Pam to gain more courage and she did. She confessed how she feels about everyone in the office and Jim in the Beach Games episode. Then there was a scene where she says that she has become fully corrupt. Being an office administrator I don't know why people hate her, especially in season 9. She's adorable. I love how happy she is when she gets with Jim. She's so beautiful and the way she speaks and her expressions all seem so genuine. Pam's role is truly made for Jenna. I want a friend like Pam. She is literally always giving everyone such good advice. I love Pam. She's wholesome and relatable. Pam is a very unappreciated character. I love what she brings. You know how in one of the final scenes, Pam talks about how she hopes a girl saw this show and learned from Pam to be strong and love herself? Well, I've sworn that in order of Pam Beasley help it, that I will be strong and love myself. I love you, Pammy. I love Pam because she's at the same time the kind and mess around and find out type of person. I love Pam. She's a great character. She's fun, kind to others, even Angela, who treated her badly and has a great character arc. She starts out timid and too shy to ask for what she wants and ends up gaining the courage to fall in love with her soulmate and lie and create a new job for herself. Pam is probably one of the most realistic characters in the show. She isn't perfect and has her own flaws, but she tries to grow and change. She's not always perfect though. She isn't always the perfect partner or a perfect person. Sometimes she's insecure. Sometimes she's a bit selfish. Sometimes she doesn't succeed. Spoiler alert. That's been all of us. But she also has a heart and tries to do good by people, even Michael. So far, more real and multidimensional than almost everyone in the office. And yet people still hate her. Maybe it's sexism. Maybe they're telling on themselves for seeing too much in Pam in themselves. Maybe it's both. Whatever. I like Pam and I thought Jenna Fisher did a fine job portraying her story. I can write an entire dissertation as to why she is not a good person, wife, friend, or worker, for that matter. The list goes on and on. I've watched the entire show 10 times or more completely. With every rewatch, I find more reasons to dislike her. I am tired of the narrative that Pam is the best. I know this may get some hate, but honestly, how can anyone like her? Pam is not perfect, but I'd be her friend. 
especially after she loosens up a bit. I do prefer the more adventurous, outgoing Pam. Thank you to the writers of The Office. Pam has done nothing heinous. She has started no fires, run no one over, has faked fired no one, and he, she's not the Boston Strangler. She does not fetishize women's breasts to the extreme that they make or break a relationship, is not a hater, etc. Given the sins of the others in the office, she is a benign character. I would suggest you make a list of characteristics you find hateful or majorly off-putting. Go through it and circle the characteristics of traits that you, your friends or frenemies may possess. Hatred of others who have not negatively impacted your life is often based on traits that bug you, whether in yourself or in those around you. Still, yourself or something to be feared that you may be. The more I watch, the more I find I dislike Pam. Why do I hate Pam so much in the final season? I think I know. From season 9, episode 24, when Jim decided to come back to Scranton full time, I was relieved. But I also felt a little guilty. I mean, he's giving up this big thing for me, but he seems happy. I mean, he's certainly been goofing around a lot. I love goofy Jim. Jim is actually achieving his dream, like in the process of doing it. Something Pam failed to do herself, so she should understand how he must feel to be that close to genuine success. Like, if she had become a real artist somehow. Knowing this, she willfully forced Jim to choose between his dream or herself anyways. A dream he was in the process of accomplishing, and she seemed fully content with that choice. When Jim decided, she makes it seem like it was his choice and his choice only. Nah, dude, you forced his hand, but take no responsibility as usual. I love Goofy Jim. Giving up on his dream to keep you entertained and the gleeful manner in which she said that really irritated me. Pam is just selfish. Jim can support literally every single endeavor you choose to take on, no matter the stupidity. Michael Scott paper company anyone or lack of success art school sales but when Jim is actually achieving something like his dream and not just for himself but for you and your entire family you can't just stick it out even a little to support his success for the betterment of your entire family's future seriously I just watched the episode with Roy's wedding. Why are Pam and Jim so offended by his piano playing? Instead of acknowledging, wow, that's pretty cool. He must have worked so hard to learn piano on the low. Or wow, this is so romantic. They're just angry at him for some reason. And then they just obsess over comparing themselves to Roy and his wife. I like the little self-awareness moment that they may be not as nice as they think they are. Haha. <laughs> Pam's acting like a drunk girl was extremely well done. Pam seems like that really caring aunt who doesn't have a lot of money but would do anything for you. I feel like Pam would be a great person to have as a best friend. I admire Pam's tremendous self-restraint where Michael is concerned. He continually treats her like dirt, often insulting and humiliating Pam in front of the others. And all the time she is so professional in her dealings with him. If it were me, I'd probably have burned down Michael's house by the end of season four. I've always liked the little subtle attention to detail with Pam's hairstyles. It started out with a damaged, half-grown out small town girl perm and gradually morphed into something a little more mature and classy. I felt bad for Pam when Michael was dating her mom. Snarky Pam is the truest Pam. Physically hurts me when Pam throws the tiramisu into the trash. Like, hurts. Pam endangered their child, shamed Jim for wanting to follow his dreams and stole from the company. I used to really dislike Pam during the original run of The Office. Pam and Jim were heavily advertised because they were considered the major draw for the will they, won't they factor. 
They also swayed the focus of the writers. Now, after some rewatches, I've noticed that the writers never really placed Pam on a pedestal. I think they pointed out her flaws, just like every other character, sometimes even more. It's the reason I enjoy watching Ryan mocked mercilessly. Every character gets an opportunity to put her down. They criticize her constantly and she puts up with it. I give her credit to her character for not taking it personally and going with the flow. I also couldn't stand Angela early on, but could also appreciate that she made positive changes to her life and her way of thinking. She changed a lot by the end of her run, as did Michael. I've also learned to appreciate Meredith, who constantly gets slut shamed throughout the series. I understand where a lot of her hate comes from. I don't like her, but I don't dislike her like I did when I watched it live and couldn't pause or rewind. You'll enjoy the show a lot more if you observe the writer's true intentions. No one is meant to be heroic. They're emulating real people in a small town at a job they're not crazy about. Anyone know why Pam's drawing was replaced with a motivational poster in the Koi Pond episode? They talked about this on Office Ladies. Apparently, Erin destroyed it in a deleted scene, but Jenna fought for it for, to be kept as she felt it was an important part of the show and the relationship between Pam and Michael. It didn't feel right having Erin destroy it and to have it gone off the wall. So they had that on the wall while they were arguing about Pam's painting. Meredith is future Pam. In season 9, episode 3, Andy says Pete should hook up with Meredith at the end. People say Pete is the new Jim, therefore Jim gets with Pam. The reason why Jan is so sure about Michael and Pam having an affair is probably because of the relationship she had with her secretary, Hunter. In Fire, Pam, Phyllis and Kelly have a side game of who would you do? And Pam at first says Oscar, but then says Toby. My theory? When the employees go back into the office, Kelly, a noted gossip, who happens to work in the annex next to Toby, tells him about it, thus creating his interest in her. When she dumps Roy, Toby chickens out and does not ask her out, waiting to shoot his shot at the end of season four when she's dating Jim and is leaving for Costa Rica. In the stress relief episode, Jim and Oscar use the chaos of Dwight's fire drill to smash the copier because Pam won in the surplus episode in the chairs versus copier argument, thus forcing corporate to replace the copier. Jim stayed with Karen only until Pam returned his effort. Last night I had a massive realization. Maybe obvious to everyone else, but please humor me about this love triangle. Jim needed Pam to prove her feelings before he would leave Karen. He had been crushed too many times. He needed her to put it all out on the table, just like he had, regardless of their respective relationship status, a la engaged and married. He would have stayed with Karen until Pam expressed her feelings without question to see if she cared enough to step outside of her comfort zone to be with him. She did, and even went a step further to express her feelings in front of everyone, as opposed to privately like he had. Beach day is to Pam, what casino night is to Jim. Listening to the Office Ladies podcast, and I just finished the episode on sexual harassment. During the filming of the show, Jenna Fisher had a Pam document where she thought about and explained some aspects of Pam's life that are not shown in the series. One major one is how Pam and Roy started dating. Jenna's theory is that Roy started working at the Beasley Family Hardware Store in Scranton as a high schooler, and Pam was occasionally there. He was clearly a jock. He said he was on the football team in the Booze Cruise episode, and Pam was likely a quiet, nerdy art girl. He was looking for her paintings in the job fair episode, so that was likely the only way they would interact. She knew earlier on that Roy was not the guy for her, but stayed with him because her family loved him and he was already ingrained with them. In the episode Sexual Harassment, there's also a bit of dialogue that shows he's charming with Pam's mom. 
I personally love this theory, especially because it's from the actress who played Pam. I can definitely see season one to three Pam settling for Roy because she feels like she can't do better than marry her high school sweetheart in a small town and answer phones for the rest of her life. Nothing wrong with that. I'm a secretary myself, but Pam had dreams beyond being a receptionist. In fact, I know and heard plenty of women who have done that. What are your thoughts or theories for the stuff that we don't see on screen? Bonus fun fact, Jenna believes the question Pam responded, yeah, I think I do, during the phone call with her mom on casino night was, do you love Jim? Any theories on why Pam didn't mention her experience from the Michael Scott paper company when interviewing in Philly for the office manager position? It makes her look flighty. She walked away from a secure job on a whim to work for a company that lasted a couple of weeks, and she knew Michael wouldn't be able to succeed. This would probably be a red flag to some hiring managers. I know it would be a strike on any app I was reviewing. Pam never failed art school. This is what actually happens in New York. Pam has enough talent to get into Pratt School of Design, one of the best art schools in the world. We never see her struggle with class or assignments, and at no point does she tell Jim that she can't cope with a new program. She seems to be having a great time. Plus, that logo she whipped up for the Dundam Mifflin ad? Yeah, that's definitely done by someone who hates computers. Oh, and that time when she meets Jim's brothers and admits one of her lecturers thinks she shows promise? Definitely something teachers say to a student who is failing. Meanwhile, she and Jim start having off days when their usual dynamic is disrupted. They miss each other. Then a classmate tells her that the course is not the end of the journey for her. If she's serious, she needs to stay in New York, she says. Jim is in Scranton. To which a classmate asks her, whether she wants to spend the rest of her life wondering what might have been. Then we learn she failed art school. We don't see her fail, she just tells Jim. Jim tells her that's all right. She should just stay on and come back the right way. She decides to go back to Scranton. I think that when a classmate asks her whether she wants to wonder for the rest of her life what might have been, she thinks about Jim, not a career in art. I think that because Jim always encouraged her to pursue this dream, she thinks he would be disappointed or encourage her to continue if she passed. Remember, he heard what Alex said to her about her career prospects. I think that when she was with Roy, she yearned for a different life and that art had been the idea of a different life she clung to. But with Jim, she no longer yearns for a different life. She wants to be with him. In the end, she realizes that pursuing her career goals in favor of her relationship was making her unhappy. When she considers what she would regret losing more, she decides in favor of Jim. I have a theory of what would have happened if Michael gave Pam the longest engagement award instead of the whitest sneakers award. I see two possible scenarios with almost the same outcome. Pam will either accept the award and give a drunken speech about how she feels about her relationship or engagement with Roy, or she leaves and Jim goes to console her until she ends up telling him about her true feelings for Roy. I'm not sure if Pam would end things with Roy after she sobered up because Pam at the same time wasn't a big risk taker, but if she did, I'm not sure if Jim and Pam would last long as a couple. Let me know what you think. The way Pam looked terrified when Michael came up to her at the start of the series was hilarious. The way Pam threw the chocolates at Michael Say's lecture <laughs> is too funny. Pam slapping Michael is so iconic. We needed way more drunk Pam. I especially love when she gets pissy with Ryan. It's too real then. When Pam booed Ryan for coming in on a horse was great too. My favorite Pam and Ryan moment isn't the one when they're going back and forth. It's when they're sitting next to each other in the meeting with their jaws hitting the floor in disbelief and amazement. Why? It's the meeting where Oscar tells off Michael and then Michael kisses Oscar. Their reactions are hilarious every single time. 
Pam's prank about the ring was lame, where the brother's prank was to get Jim as mad as possible. When Pam joined the murder mystery standoff, LOL, oh my goodness, Pam breastfeeding the wrong baby. Pam had the best character development of the show, in my opinion. She went from being a shy, quiet, insecure person who let everyone walk all over her because she was in a verbally abusive and controlling relationship to an independent, confident, happy person who discovered her worth when she finally got into a healthy relationship with Jim. That just shows how much people you are around affect the way you act. And shows how much coming out of a toxic relationship and going into a healthy one can completely change you as a person. I love how Pam went from a lady just trying to do a job as a receptionist and not getting involved with Michael's shenanigans to being Jim's partner in crime and pulling off his pranks on Dwight and laughing at Michael's jokes and skits. She made tremendous progress as a person, even if she was just an actor in a show about a paper company. I'm still very proud of her. One of my favorite scenes with Pam is the episode Diwali where she's dancing to Crazy in Love and you see Roy about to go into the celebration and sees Pam actually enjoying herself without him and he decides not to go inside to see her. It shows how much Pam has grown without Roy and it shows how much Roy is obsessed with getting her back that he decides to let her fun than being awkward and quiet around him. I don't know if I'm thinking too much about it but I still think it's a great scene. Pam is just that girl that everyone knows that's sweet and kind of goofy. Definitely one of my favorite characters. I don't think Pam took the teapot home, but even if she did, or even if she told Roy about it, he didn't really care or get the significance. What was written on Pam's teapot letter? It was a confession note. Jim is the real Scranton Strangler. He also stole and robbed and kidnapped the president's son and held him for ransom. John Krasinski wrote what's inside the card at some point prior to us shooting the scene for AARM and it is a private message to his co-star and dear friend Jenna Fisher. They are the only ones who knows what it says. She read it for the first time when he gave it to her in the first take we shot and I can tell you that judging from her emotional response, it's really something special. The Finer Things Club uses the teapot. Jim got Pam. If you have gotten to this part of the video, comment the emoji teapot. I'll see you again next time. Tra la la.